As you all know, Wednesday the President will address a joint session of Congress. Among other topics, as we talked about a bit yesterday, he will lay out the American Families Plan, the specific details, and discuss a number of other issues that are important and major priorities to him, including expanding access to health care uh, and addressing uh, putting in place policing reforms. On Thursday, on the President's 100th day in office, he and the First Lady will travel to Georgia to highlight how he has delivered on his promises to the American people. While he is there, he will participate in a car rally. Uh, and on Friday, he will have additional out-of-town travel that we will hopefully have more details for you in the coming days. Uh, finally, uh, I know many of you saw this and reported it and tweeted it, but uh, we announced this morning that the President will travel to the United Kingdom and Belgium in June for his first overseas trip as President. This trip will highlight his commitment to restoring our alliances, to revitalizing the transatlantic relationship and working in close cooperation with our allies and multilateral partners to address global challenges and better secure America's interests. Uh, he will attend the G Summit in uh, Cornwall, which is happening from June 11th through the 13th. He will then travel to Brussels, uh, Belgium, where he will participate in the NATO Summit on June 14th. And while in Brussels, the President will also participate in the US-EU Summit. With that, kick us off. All right, thank you. Uh, with the, the climate summit, uh, promise reductions in carbon emissions uh, that the president announced this week, without the investments um, in the infrastructure proposal, um, mm -hmm. can those be achieved? And with that, is, is that then, is there some red line with Republicans that you have as a result of making those uh, goals happen? Well, first, yes, absolutely, it can be achieved uh, because we have several paths uh, toward achieving that objective and that goal. Some include legislation, the American Jobs Plan, but there are additional legislative options. There's executive options that are uh, are also on the table, and of course, working with the private sector and states and localities to taking continuing to take additional steps forward. But I'll also say that we have every intention of getting the American Jobs Plan passed and signed into law. Uh, as we saw and we talked about a bit yesterday, uh, there was a Republican counter proposal yesterday. Uh, the stage we're in now is we will have discussions, we'll get a full briefing, we expect those to happen through the course of the next several days. We'll review that plan, we'll ask questions at a staff level, and then the President will invite a number of those members down here to the White House. And if I could ask just one more. Sure. Um, is the President speaking today uh, with President Erdogan uh, and with that, the, the Turkish foreign minister said earlier this week um, that if uh, President Biden goes forward with uh, uh, his campaign pledge on Armenian genocide recognition that it would harm U.S.-Turkey ties. How much is um, that idea weighing on the president's mind as he makes this decision whether or not to follow through on the campaign pledge, especially with the need for uh, Turkish cooperation on things like Afghanistan and Iran? I certainly understand your line of questioning. No, there's a great deal of interest uh, in this particular area. Uh, I don't have any uh, calls of, with foreign leaders to predict for you, uh, as would be the case with any call. Uh, we will certainly provide a readout uh, once, whenever we do a call with a foreign leader and the president of the United States, uh, and, and actually down the down the rung below them as well. Uh, in terms of delivering on his campaign pledge, um, I don't have anything to preview for you on that front either. Uh, I expect we'll have more in the coming days.